Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Ibrahim Hanbal. I am a teacher handling the Tree I subject. And in this video, we'll be going over UML diagrams, specifically the sequence diagram. So the sequence diagram is meant to showcase a sequence of events or actions that occur in your system. In other words, it will showcase uh, the different steps that uh, your system takes when processing data as well as how long each of those steps take. So there are four main parts of the sequence diagram uh, which are listed here. Let's go, over, let's go over them one by one starting with the actors. So the actors is similar to what we have in the use case diagram. These are the people who will interact with your system. So they are represented by a stick figure and a noun at the bottom. The noun will be a description of what the user is or the actor is for example customer admin student teacher employee manager etc so that is the actor these are the people who will um, interact or send or receive data from your system we also have the objects which is represented by a rectangle with rounded edges so we place here usually the classes uh, in our system. So these are the parts of our system which will process now the inputs or it will receive inputs from the user. So there are two ways to write this. You can be writing it as course organizer or uh, course organizer.java. In other words, you can write it as a phrase or as the file name if, you're, if your uh, programming language has a particular way of naming classes or file classes. So that is the objects. These are usually the classes of your system which represent uh, or which uh, usually will take data, in, uh, take inputs and then process those inputs and send an output. So uh, what is the next part of the sequence diagram? We have what we call the lifeline. So it is represented by this set of broken lines over here. So the lifeline, as you can see, is uh, placed just below the actor or the objects. This is meant to represent the time it takes for the system to process information. So in other words, the longer the lifeline, the longer or the more processes that your system will uh, handle or the longer it takes for each process to execute. And you'll notice that in this lifeline, there is this big white bar. This white bar represents the time it takes to uh, process information. So the longer this is, generally speaking, the longer your, uh, the longer it takes a certain uh, process or a certain procedure to execute. Next up, or the last part, is the messages. So this is the information sent from the user or from the actor to the uh, module or to the uh, class. So in this case, the student would like to update their information. So the course organizer will be the one in this case who will handle that. And as you can see, it will take this long for the course organizer to update the info, after which it will pass on information to the next module or the next class. So those are the four parts, the actor, which is the users of the system, the objects, which are the classes of the system, and the lifeline, which is uh, the length or the time that it takes for each process in the system to execute and the messages which are the uh, you could say the actions performed or the methods or the um or the uh, executions that are performed take note for the messages this do not have to be methods if you would like you can place it uh, you can place it in a sentence or phrase format for example i'm going to erase this update information or update info and I'll replace this with um, student updates their personal info. So if you would like this to be the uh, message, then that's fine as well. So again, this is not limited to just technical or software applications. If you would like to make this for a non-IT or non-software related system, that's fine as well. So there, this is another way of writing the messages. You will simply write down a phrase describing what action will take place or what process will take place. And then you will still place how long it takes for them to update and whatnot. Now, um, let us try to create an example here for our um, 
for our sequence diagram. So I have already here three uh, or two actors and one uh, object. So we have a student, a teacher, and module management, which is our class or which is our object. So um, let us start with the teacher. The teacher will uh, let, let us assume that in this scenario, our system is a, a system which will handle or which will allow us to send and receive modules. So similar to the example we used for the class diagram. So the system here, our, our hypothetical system, will allow us to send and receive modules and then uh, have students check them or have the students check or download them as needed. So let us start with the teacher. The teacher will be the one who will initiate, oops, will initiate the uh, first sending of data. So let's draw a bar here. I think let's make it a bit shorter. And then let us draw another bar here, which is a bit longer because it will send or it will receive the data. So let us draw a line. There we go. And here the teacher will upload modules. Upload modules. There we go. And then after uploading modules, the student can now let's draw a line here or a bar here. The student can now view the module. So the message here is that the student can now view the modules. And then that uh, another thing that the student can do after, let's say, viewing the modules is that they can also, well, let's put it a bit lower. There we go. They can also download the modules. So download modules. Okay, great. So this is now our first step. So the teacher will upload the modules, after which the system will process and the student will be able to view and download the modules. Now, let us add another step. Let's create another one and then let us do another process here. Let's make that a bit bigger. Here. So in this case, uh, here's our next um, message that will be sent by the teacher. The teacher will now be able to assign an activity. Assign or uh, let's just say that they will uh, upload an activity. So here, the next step that the teacher can do is that after uploading the modules, they can now upload an activity. And similar to the previous sequence, the uh, student can uh, view the activity. So we'll draw a line here. The student will be able to view the activity. And uh, opposite of that, they will now be able to submit the activity. So submit activity and let's add one more process or one more sequence. There we go. And then let's make this a bit larger and then one small process here. So the teacher has one last job to do in this scenario or in this sequence. Oops, let us redraw the line. And here, the teacher can upload a grade or upload the grades. After which, the student can now view the grades. Okay, so that's pretty much the uh, sequence diagram. So to explain this briefly, 
what does this tell us? So first, the teacher will be able to upload the modules. This is how long it will take them to upload or to work on the modules, after which the system will allow the user to view the modules. And then they can also download the modules for reading or for studying. Next, the teacher will be able to upload an activity to the system. The system will then allow them or allow the student to view the activity. And then later on, once they have worked on it, they can submit the activity. Uh, the last portion, the teacher will upload the grades to the system. And then uh, once it's uploaded, the student can now view their grades. So this is an example of a sequence diagram. As you can see, the white bars here represent how long it takes each process to execute. We have the messages here indicating what type of information is being sent or received. We have the two actors here who send and receive the data. And we have the system class here, which handles, which receives information, processes it, and sends it back to the appropriate user. So this is an example of a sequence diagram. Uh, hopefully, this will allow you now to create your own system diagrams for your own systems. Take note, again, this is not only applicable for software, but is also usable for, cre uh, for creating sequence diagrams of uh, non-IT systems, such as advertisements, guidelines, and so on. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.